We're here today to talk about site selection. Once you've chosen a location within your grid cell that you'd like to complete your survey, when you arrive on site, you're going to assess the area to determine whether or not there's flowers available for bumblebees, whether there's bumblebees actively foraging in the area. And once you've selected that location, you've determined that it's potentially suitable, you can conduct your survey. It doesn't have to be perfect. There could be no bumblebees present, there could be hundreds of bumblebees present, but just as long as the location is suitable, you know, no data is just as valuable as having a hundred data points when it comes to bumblebees in your survey location. A suitable site is going to have a large number of flowers present. Not just one species of flower, but a lot of different kinds of wildflowers that are out for them to be re getting nectar and pollen. It's also going to be pretty intact, so it's going to have a lot of other species present, lots of grasses, in particular bunch grasses. Um, also, if you find a lot of small mammal burrows, like gophers, that provides really good nesting habitat. So if you see those in an area, that'll tell you that there's probably good nesting locations. And in areas where you have kind of one flower that's present, or not a lot of grass diversity, and it's just kind of a monoculture, just one kind of species, that's probably not the best. There might be bees present, but there's not going to be a wide variety of species. When you're doing your bee surveys, you also want to be really conscious of the temperature and the environmental conditions that are present when you're doing your survey. You don't want to do it when it's too cold because they won't be active, or when it's too hot because it'll be too warm for the bees to be out. Usually between 60 and 90 degrees, you don't want it to be too wet, so you don't want to have a lot of precipitation, uh, a lot of rain actively falling when you're doing the surveys. So between 60 and 90 degrees, you know, partially cloudy, just a nice warm day is the perfect time to be doing a uh, bumblebee survey. When you're out doing your bumblebee surveys, you want to be conscious of where you're at. You want to know what's public land, what's private land. You have permission to access public lands because it's public, but you want to make sure if you're going to do a survey on private land that you have permission to access that private land before you do your survey. You've determined that this site is suitable con to conduct bumblebee surveys. You're going to estimate about 150 yards by 150 yards, and that will be your survey area. So that would be about to the top of the edge of this hill where the flowers end, to about the edge of the hill to the left, and then about where I'm standing. So you'd estimate your survey area, and once you've done that, you'll spend 45 minutes collecting as many bumblebees as you possibly can in that survey area. When you're doing your 45 minute survey, that's 45 search minutes. So that's how much time you're spending actually surveying your survey area. So if you have two people out doing your survey, you divide that 45 minutes by two people for a total of 45 minutes. So it'd be 22 and a half minutes for two surveyors and you can do the math based on how many other people you have helping you at your survey site. Good form, sir, good form. If you need to stop the survey for any reason, grab a drink of water, look at some of the bees that you collected, you can just stop the timer, and then when you're ready to start your survey again, just start it back up. So now we're gonna talk about how to conduct a roadside survey. So how long of a survey you need to conduct, how many sites, how long the transect is going to be, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about safety. So when you're choosing a site, you're gonna pick a 10 mile section of road. You're gonna pick a location that has lots of good floral resources, so lots of good flowers, good habitat like we've discussed. And then you're gonna spend 15 minutes at that site, and then you're gonna drive down the road at least half a mile, and you're gonna do five of those sites within that 10 mile section of road. So when you're doing these surveys, you're usually going to be within about eight feet of the edge of the road. So that's kind of the easement on the side of the road, the borrow pit, a lot of people would call it. So you're just right along the side of the road, but be conscious of where you're pulling off so that you're not moving onto private land. You're not gonna be hiking too far off the side of the road. It's gonna be directly adjacent to the side of the road. When you're doing the surveys though, you need to be absolutely sure that you're doing it safely because you are gonna be on the sides of roads. So make sure when you're pulling out to each of your sites, you're finding a nice safe spot to pull off to the side of the road and be conscious that you are alongside a highway or a road while you're doing the survey. 